name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So normally on this particular Sunday, I stand there in the pulpit and uh, go through basically a summary of the high points uh, and sometimes low points of the year and, uh, and then move our vision to the future. Um, and the reading sets up perfectly the call of James as, as we, St. James, have our annual meeting and uh, look forward to the year to come and reflect on the year past. Uh, but the reading sits too fully for me to let it uh, just be a launching point for uh, our uh, parish update. So I'm sorry you won't get a blow-by-blow a, a blow of what we've done over the past year. You'll get more of how it works into what I feel is a deep passage about calling and what it means to be called and how we are called. But I do want to start by saying this year represents, uh, in my 15-plus years of ordained ministry, the proudest I have ever been by a parish. We started the year with uh, plenty of reason for trepidation. Uh, we had an enormous hole out back uh, that we were frantically trying to get under roof. Uh, we were still reeling from the loss of a, a pledge that we had uh, depended on for many years. Uh, and it was amazing the way people responded, the way people so gracefully worked um, and worshipped uh, and uh, be became the church, uh, remained the church uh, through construction, uh, through all of the ebbs and flows of the year. I was so heartened as people came uh, through snow uh, to come and be here to watch our choir perform the Messiah uh, and just beaming with pride at both the congregation and our choir uh, at that high point, and that people came not just to enjoy the music and to celebrate the holiday, uh, but to celebrate their friends uh, who worked so tirelessly to make that a reality. I celebrated St. James as we walked from this parish up uh, to Alexandria Pike uh, to worship with First Baptist, a relationship that is uh, incredibly important, and even more so uh, as Virginia makes the news uh, for uh, uh, less than joyful reasons, uh, and that we uh, increase our understanding and our ability uh, to communicate and understand each other uh, and be sensitive to each other. Uh, I celebrate uh, this parish in so many ways. I celebrated two weeks ago as our children uh, from the school came and led worship uh, and so many participated with such joy. And as we cut a ribbon uh, and Laura Klein and so many people um, that were part of it from years past were able to make it back uh, and be with us as we celebrated as a family uh, what was an incredible leap, an incredible stretch. I celebrate uh, as I watched as what was supposed to be one of the hardest financial years uh, that I can recall uh, all of a sudden get a little sunnier and rosier despite how many times we have asked you uh, to dig deep. I have been absolutely buoyed by the fact that I don't know that there's ever been this many people involved in this many ministries. So many people, over 70 just on our leadership list. And there's so many more to be counted. I have been buoyed by this year, uh, and I think they stand alone. There are so many things I could mention. I could spend the next 30 minutes just going through things that we did last year. Uh, but I want to take you to a moment in time. And it's probably not really a moment in time because I think John just kind of took a whole bunch of stories and put them together. Uh, but I like it better, so I'm going to stick with it. Uh, I've always struggled, despite the fact that it's our school motto and despite the fact that it's written right under that stained glass window of the call of uh, James and John or Peter and Andrew. I assume it's James and John since we're St. James. Um, but it just didn't make sense. Uh, Jesus walks by, uh, and these people who are fishing, who depend on fishing for uh, their livelihood, for their food, for their family's uh, well-being, um, see this man walk by, and he says nothing more than, follow me. I'll make you fish for people. And they do it. And they do it. It doesn't make any sense. If someone walked by and said, Ben, drop everything. Drop your family. Drop your job. Drop everything. Uh, and expected me to follow without so much as a question, 
well, what are we, where are we going? What's it going to look like? Uh, are there benefits? Uh, you know, uh, what should I tell my family? Uh, you know, can, can you give me a couple days to think about it? Uh, can you give me a couple days to pack and prepare? No, just follow me. It almost seems like a Jedi mind trick. How did that moment happen? What would I say? I'm pretty sure I'd say, uh, maybe. <laughs> Let me think about it. Maybe just, no, I've got too much going on right now. But they do. This story makes a little bit more sense. So these fishermen are out, and they've been out all night long, and they're fishing at night uh, because uh, before nylon nets, uh, uh, there was thought that the fish could see the nets, and so when you fish at night, uh, they can't see and swim out of the way of the nets. Uh, and so they've been fishing all night, which is the time to fish. They're the experts at fishing. They've been doing it for generations. This man is a carpenter who also thinks he's a preacher. And so they get to shore after an exhausting day. They've been working all night long, and they get to shore. They probably just want to put their nets up and go to bed. And there's a crowd gathered around uh, as this carpenter turned preacher is uh, talking about the word of God in a way uh, that is absolutely opening people's mind and hearts uh, to something brand new. But they're exhausted. But they humor them and they join in and they uh, listen as they're taking their nets away uh, uh, politely. Uh, and then uh, Jesus gets into their boat, which prolongs their ability to be able to uh, go to bed. Um, and then after that, the carpenter says, you know what? Go out into the deeper water in the middle of the day. And I'm sure they're thinking to themselves, we've been doing this all night. And they've had nets that are meant to be uh, uh, bottom nets, uh, uh, probably more conducive to shallower waters. But he says, go out into the deep water. And they're thinking, if everybody here wasn't watching, we'd just say no. <laughs> but because everybody's watching, we'll humor them and we'll say, OK. Uh, and they go out and they take these nets. And it's important to know that these, there's different nets that they refer to in the Bible. These are the nets that pull from the bottom. So they're going out into the deep waters and they're pulling from the bottom. Uh, which means all kinds of muck and all kinds of critters are ending up in these nets. Not just the kind of fish um, that you go and you try to catch a school of fish and you put it on either side and you, you pull through until you get the, the, you know, the, the real good fish. This is all kinds of fish. This is the image that Jesus has for the kingdom of God. All that stuff is in the net. And so they pull it out. And it's so much that the nets are about to break and the other boat has to come in. Uh, and all of a sudden they realize... This man is who he says he is. This man can do things that no one can do. And casting our nets and pulling in fish no longer seems like the most important thing in our lives. This is an invitation to live a life that matters more than anything that we've imagined before. And when he said follow, now it makes sense. Yes! If we can do this with fish, what can we do with people? What can we do with humanity? What can we do with the, 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 the world you've given us that is so far from what it could be? What is possible now? And they go. I'd like to think of that as the moment we find ourselves in right now. We are in a moment of abundance where we have surprised at least your rector with how much we've been able to do, with how many people have been able to roll up their sleeves, with how many people have been able to make the impossible possible, with what a relatively small congregation has been able to do outside these doors. We are lifting that net out of the water, and it is overflowing, and we have to take a moment to say, wow, God can do anything. And with God, we can do anything. But it's also a moment for us to say, so what? So what are we to do? Where is God calling us? Not just how are we going to respond, but what's the call look like? I think that's exactly where we are as a congregation. We've spent so much of the last uh, several years preparing uh, for uh, our expansion and renovation, deciding what we needed as a church and school, building up uh, our church and school ministries, uh, and we have been successful, but God is nowhere near done with us. We've taken the net out of the water, and it is overflowing, and now the dangerous work starts. Now we know what we can do with God, and now we know God's power and God's call to us. 
and we're called to go deep. We're called to go deeper. One of the things that I have to say, uh, we've had the most robust uh, Christmas and Easter services uh, that I can find anywhere in that big red book that we keep all those services in, uh, but it tells me something. It tells me that our net has never been wider. But I think we need to go deeper. I think those folks that fill uh, this church to overflowing on Christmas Eve and Easter Day, uh, I think those folks that were here two weeks ago, uh, I think those folks that come and go, um, they need to dig deeper. I think all of us need to go deeper. Whatever it is that we are called to, we need to find out, are we maximizing that? Are we living to the level and the breadth of which God calls us because we've seen what's possible with God? <coughs> Jesus says, go out into the deep waters, and trust me, you'll catch all the fish you need. So I start my sabbatical. This is the first sabbatical I've had um, uh, in almost uh, 16 years of ministry uh, by the time it comes, and I'm excited about it, um, and it is a time for rest and a time for refreshment, uh, but it's also a time uh, for discernment. And personally, I'm discerning where do I feel like St. James and Ben Moss are called in ministry. What's it called to look like? We've seen what's possible. Where is God directing our energies and our time? And then our vestry is going to enter into that same conversation. Where are we called? What will it look like? So I'm going to invite all of you into that discussion. Hold on to that image of them pulling the nets out of the water and seeing that it is full beyond all measure, so full it's tearing at the seams, and picture where we are as a community of faith. And ask yourself, what's next? Where am I individually called? And where are we collectively called to go next? Come, follow me. I will make you fishers of people. Amen.